So now that I've talked about all these parameters here, I just want to show you how I've used this compressor on my drum group. And then after that, we'll talk about the second page of parameters relating to the sidechain input. So let's go back here and I'm going to first play the uncompressed signal. It sounds like this. Now, as I bring the compression in, you'll hear that the drums are a little bit, uh, a little bit louder and they've been fattened up a little bit. So I've used a relatively middle of the area attack and I'm trying to let some of those transients through because the kick and the snare are, are very transient sounds, they're very attack oriented. And um, besides that, I've, I've done just a little bit. The, the amount is relatively high, but the threshold isn't. And I've, I've just uh, played around with this until I got a sound that I like. Um, I'm not going to be telling you that you have to do exact settings to get a good sound for your compression. I just play around with these until I get a sound that I like. And um, it's also helpful to see a visual representation of what's going on. So to do that, all you have to do is hit the tab button that's going to move you over to the mix view. And here you can see how the compressor actually works. So I'll play my drums again. And now you can see here, this meter is GR for gain reduction. And that's showing you actually what the compressor is doing when it's bringing down the volume of your signal. And so that's nice because you can get sort of a visual, a visual sense of what's happening. And you can also change, change how it sounds. So you can hear as I bring that threshold down, things sound really, really squashed. And I, I don't really like that sound, but um, you can do that if you want. Uh, so that covers the compression for the drums. And with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and move on to the bass. And uh, what I've done here is use the feedback engine. And I'm not really using this to get uh, a much dynamic change as more of just a saturation effect. So here's what the bass sounds like without compression. It's some really deep, quiet sub bass. So you might not be able to hear it without some headphones or speakers. So, and then the compression comes in and just sort of fattens that up a little bit and adds some higher frequency harmonics. So here, I'm not really gonna go into too much depth, but I just basically threw the compressor on in stock form, changed it a little bit, and I'm using it more of a saturation effect almost, uh, as opposed to a dynamic effect. Um, so just showing you a creative option that you can do. And uh, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to the sample. This is what I really wanted to talk about here because I've used the sidechain option for the compressor. Uh, so turning this on here, we can see um, that our main page is, is exactly what we already talked about, no changes there. But the difference is that I've incorporated a sidechain input. Now when we use compression on the drums, the gain reduction, the actual compression, was triggered by the signal itself, the drum signal itself. So uh, the, the, the amount of compression was dependent on how loud the actual signal was. Now the difference uh, when we use sidechain input is the amount of compression is going to be dependent on some other signal rather than the signal itself. Uh, so going back to our analogy of the guy in machine, um, rather than looking at the signal itself and then turning the volume down, he's looking at two signals. Uh, so one signal is the actual signal to be compressed and one is the sidechain input. So he's looking at that sidechain input and he's going to be like, oh, this is loud. This is, this, is, uh, this is going to be triggering my compression. So I'm going to look at my original signal and turn down the volume. Um, so the compression is now triggered by a secondary input, secondary signal. And so to choose the signal, all you have to do is click the source button and you can choose any individual sound or any group. So the sounds are just um, the, the double sort of name here, A1, S1, S4. And then the groups are the C1, B1, and so on. Uh, so I've chosen the entire drum group to be my sidechain input. And then along with that, you can choose how loud that sidechain input is to the effect. So it's not actually changing the volume of your, of your sidechain source. It's going to stay the same level in your mix, but it is changing how, how loud the compressor sees it as. And so um, that's basically going to have the effect of, of making it a more noticeable compression or a more subtle effect of compression. Now over here we have a sidechain filter option. And what this is doing is telling the compressor to only look at a specific frequency range of the sidechain input. Um, so as a practical example of this, uh, say you have two different kick drums in your drum group and you want the sidechain compression to be triggered 
by all of those kick drums, by both of those kick drums. Uh, so you can't choose both of the sounds, you can only choose one at a time. So rather than doing a sound, you just choose the entire group and then turn on the filter, bring the frequency down to those low range kick drum area, and then you can sort of narrow the width if you need to. And this is going to uh, tell the sidechain compression to only look at those low frequencies, in essence, only triggering the compression when the kick drums are playing. Uh, so all of that has the effect of getting a sound like this. So you can maybe hear it better if I jack this source volume all the way up. So you can really hear it pumping to the kick drums, and if I turn the filter off, you'll hear the sidechain compression be triggered by the kicks and the snares. And the hi-hats as well, all of those drum sounds. Um, but it sounds as I wanted it to without doing any crazy stuff here. I wanted this a little bit down, turn the filter back on, it sounds like this. So that is another option for compression. You can use that sidechain input to uh, get that pumping effect on your sample or whatever other, whatever other sound that you want to work with. Now finally, I have used the compression on the master bus here just as a mastering effect. Um, like I said, I just play around with these until I get the sound that I want. I'm not really too scientific or too educated about it. Um, but let's turn this off. And I also apologize that the compressor is affecting my microphone. That's kind of weird but I can't really work around that. I'm gonna turn this off and then play it back and then show you, show you how it sounds when the compressor kicks in. So that covers it for the video on compression. Uh, hopefully by talking about how it actually works, uh, how it actually affects your signal, you can see the different applications that you can use in your own projects. Um, as always, thanks for watching this machine video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, especially since it's a little bit of a confusing topic, a little bit more, more tricky than some of my other stuff, if you have any questions, just leave them below and I will do my best to answer you and get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, so thanks for watching and I will see you next week for the next video in the machine tutorial series.